Hey everyone, it's been a while since the last review and a while since the episode two, but I'm happy to be here. Uh, the episode today that we're going to be talking about is over the Bruno arc. Bucciarti is coming. It's not Bucciolati because it's not L. Just not know how many times I tell people that. Uh, but I have a lot to go over, so I'm going to bring that on here. So the first thing to be going over is the adaptation of Giorno's Past. This was a great adaptation from the manga off the weight of it going past of what was required and what we had to begin with. For example, the living conditions of Giorno gave you a lot more to feel for than what we had originally. We had no exact frame of reference to know how bad his home truly was with just his mother. Then you see how cramped is the space alone, how disgusting the rest of the space was. Uh, then there's little Haruno Shiobana just sitting there trembling in fear in the midst of it all, sitting in the darkness. And it was crazy, but and there was also this uh, added dialogue between uh, his mother and a friend of hers to give you an even stronger reason as to why you should dislike her. Then the marriage had happened and the pictures were being taken and you have the stepfather being nice to him, which was a whole different setup from the manga. And it actually gave you a lot more to think of. It's just like, oh, okay, so this this guy, he's maybe going to be uh, the saving grace for Jorno, but but no, this is all manipulation. It, it made the viewer unaware to think that this guy could potentially be what saves Jorno, but just turns out he's worse than his mom. Uh, it's a legit powerful sequence, and I'm um, honestly all for the setup. It's it's a good mind game for people that have never seen Part 5 or read it, I mean, more so. Uh, this is a great adaptation, and for what a lot of adaptations should be, honestly, instead of just adding unnecessary things to the plot, because this is a really good uh, indicator, a good thing to elaborate on. The chapter itself had to focus on what was at hand, and didn't have enough room to include every little tidbit about Jorno's past and we were under able we were able to understand the general idea of what they were going for uh, with Araki but now we're able to see this elaborated on and this isn't skimmed or anything it's not just a three panel type thing then it moves on into Jorno being the saving grace to the gangster and how that all spiraled into a better life for Jorno the most riveting part about this has to be the addition of the scene where the gangster that Jorno had saved because I'm going to say gangster twice because there's two of them. The gangster that Jorno had saved was taking out a different gangster who was selling to kids. But that specific dealer had a kid himself. The kid wants to pull revenge on Jorno's gangster, the first one. But what what's told to him, it clicks to his head that his father was truly the one that's in the wrong. I mean, both are wrong, obviously, in, in a... In a I guess it's not. It's, it's kind of odd to be objective with it, but they're both wrong in this sense. But with how the rules were set up originally and how the mafia goes, he's going to be the one in the wrong, the kid's father. So you see this kid filled up with all types of emotions standing before the gangster and Giorno, trembling from fear, confusion, sadness, anger, and he's just filled to the brim with emotion. <laughs> it's like Narancha, but... I love seeing this because it takes apart our situation with part five. Stopping a few dealers at the cost of their life isn't the correct thing to do because you get situations like this and then the people themselves are most likely doing it because the profit that they get from it is more than what the mafia would normally give them for just doing the regular jobs that they're given. If you stop it at the roots though, you'll never have to worry about this type of thing, which is why we get someone like Giorno to do exactly like that and instead encompass the true motives of the mafia then there's also this issue with the morality at hand that's tugging on each side because the gangster that was saved by Giorno had killed someone but this someone was killing multiple people specifically children through this process of dealing this is something we usually have in part five because retiring enemies is no more and we're a completely different environment and along with that Bruno's group along with Giorno are not ones to just let stuff go like that. The people are legitimately going to die if they do the wrong things. That's an even bigger conversation for later, though. So I think I'll leave that alone for right now because morality in part five is huge, huge, huge thing. On the Bruno and Giorno fight, I've always liked this fight for the interaction at hand and the thought process for Giorno in this. When Bruno escapes, some would just stop and take the win, but Bruno knows the... Or no, Giorno knows the Mafia better than most. And he knows that he has to nip this in the bud before he gets guapped over. Like, over time, they'll actually just find him out and have more people. And it'll be easier to take out Giorno as a team. And now, for how this was all adapted, I'm thinking that the best thing about this has to be 
Bruno's consciousness being projected out there. The animation being done, seeing it was it was amazing to see him blinking around and then his reaction to it all. It's phenomenally lively because especially the voice acting done for it. He just you can feel the power itself in it, and he's just getting so cocky for itself. He's like, "Oh, Jorno, you you fucked up this time." And one of the big things I also do want to focus on for the fight itself was the whole tooth given life idea. And I loved seeing the reaction uh, from the anime fans because many were like, "Oh shit, I just forgot about that tooth." Like. He would have got me if if it was me versus Jorno. Jorno definitely would have got me because I completely forgot about that. And honestly, when I read it, uh, when I first was reading Part Five, I honestly forgot about it too because of the little scene where Jorn, uh, no Bruno fell into everybody, and I was more so focused on like what the fuck just happened. I was more focused on the ability than Jorno's ability, and I can see that this shook up not only Bruno but the reader too. Unless you already had the life ability down pat beforehand then i just like just expect it for you like oh man i totally knew he was gonna do that (laughs) then there's the whole conversation between the two and i make this a case in my bruno video originally bruno and giorno had a power position lane in this type of thing uh one was always towering over the other depending on who really had the situation truly in control but then we finished it up with them looking eye to eye and in the manga you have more so it's bruno looking up to Jorno, even with him being the taller character it's a great great direction for it pretty sure we're gonna see this in the next episode where you do see like bruno he's getting legitimately so close to him he's like look man you gotta, you gotta figure this shit out but yeah uh now the last thing it's on music and sound jojo has yet to disappoint me with sound effects and the music being used in this has this operatic direction going for it and i'm all the way behind it part five with a lot of its religious symbolism in italian setting called for this opera and just in general classic classical direction for these scenes and i'm happy to see this i also think that we'll be seeing some of this too in part six along with some grunge or punk music that's usually what i affiliate with uh, jolene uh and just poochie all the terms in classical and all that type of stuff but last thing being pacing i'm loving the approach of this and the cutoff for these chapters having a cut off before the end of the interaction between bruno and Jorno gives us the introduction of polpo for the next episode being a great area to continue off of instead of just rushing to get to polpo at the end of it because that's not it like each episode is uh, approaching it oh this is what it's about this is what we're gonna end with and the end of that each episode is actually taking that apart and we're gonna see everyone respectively get introduced and respectively focused on and it's doing pretty well for it so the next one is going to Start off with Bruno's introduction to the positioning and general rules of Passione, and we'll potentially end off with the lighter scene, or start to a fight, and it'll be all to the better for it. Uh, potentially, that because everything's being approached with four chapters each. So depending on that, I'm pretty sure it's be like, oh man, my lighter's out, or something like that. Uh, can't wait to talk about Black Sabbath. Forgot to mention that the fight itself was actually a great example of Araki's Kisho Tenketsu technique. But I felt like I got my thoughts out for all of this. So I think I'm honestly just done with that. If you do want to learn more about the technique I had mentioned or Araki's general view uh, and guide on how to write manga. And it's a lot more than that, honestly. Like it's, it's a, you learn a lot about Araki and like his thought process for a lot of stuff. I'll be learning. Uh, I'll be leaving that book in the description. And honestly, there's just not that many uh, books on that I, I honestly been searching out and i think iraqis is literally like the only one there a- every other mangaka just has interviews for you to go off of so this is a great way to get into the mind of iraqi also i know that no other mangaka is obviously gonna see this video <laughs> like that wouldn't make any sense but i don't know someone with any ties like if i do s- somehow have a uh a fan affiliated with s- some some area of the manga industry it would be really cool to see a lot of the thoughts on a lot of these manga for example togashi if togashi was to write a book can you imagine that that'd be insane especially with how much influence he's had over manga in general and then uh Na- naoki urasawa that would be insane e- either of them if they were to write a book that'd be pretty cool because you have the, you would have a trinity at that point with araki togashi and urasawa it'd just be phenomenal but you know that's that's literally out there just speaking that into existence for anyone uh, so we can get that potentially out there. <laughs> Thank you all for watching. Reminder, all that in the description. Well, it's just one link, so yeah, you're going to see it there. 
Uh, check out my Bruno video for a small elaboration on that whole interaction and cheers to more. Hopefully, I'll see you all in the next one. Until then, peace out and Godspeed.